So tell us about freedom that we've been given by the government. <clears throat> I am not free, and I'm not the only one who's not free. Mm. Almost everyone is not free. Everyone is allowed to express the way they feel. We are all entitled to being who we are. So comments about food and my weight never fell short from people's conversations with me. All of which made me see my body differently. Keep your profits and forget about my quality of life. But don't tell me who to love. I believe in order for anyone to be free, their mind has to be free. Yes, I'm not pulling confusion at anybody, but I want my story to be an upliftment to anybody else. Young women across the Cape Flats attended a workshop recently to show them how the internet can be used as a platform to make their voices heard. Can the internet help young women activists across the Cape Flats? This is what the Young Women's Chapter is currently exploring. Guided by the new women's movement and researchers, these young women are being supported to continue to grow as young activists and leaders in their communities. We would like to train the young women to access those information that would most be important and most be relevant to them to further their, their quality of life, to further their cause of young women's power also and to set their place in a new South Africa. Young Women Govern South Africa. As we know, young women, young women from marginalized communities are particularly excluded from decision making and public participation. So this project actually started with the Young Women's Chapter, which is an NGO, but has now been located, relocated in the Women's and Gender Studies Department. And we are working with young women students and young women from surrounding communities. Act IT Fem is a collective of young women and not so young women who have gathered for the purpose of feminist activism through information technology. While we are not affiliated with any particular political alliance, our aim is strongly political. We want to mobilize young women to play a more active role in local government and inspire the belief that we can effect social change. So the aim of our project broadly is to create a space for critical creative knowledge. And when I say critical knowledge, I don't just mean the kind of conventionally political. I also mean knowledge that is expressive. What we're trying to do with this website is, um, the main concept is to bring young women, especially from marginalized communities, to get involved in civil participation. So basically, this is online space, is a political space. But throughout the first phase, in the second phase of the project, we, fi we figured out that young women actually kind of use um, creativity to speak about their political issues. So the whole thing, the whole process about like um, the, the content, and the website, the logo, everything has been discussed by the young women. Everything has been chosen and decided by the young women. We didn't do anything. We keep on having workshops and we keep on pushing people to tell us what they want to see, what they want to discuss in the website. Creative expression is often overlooked and undervalued in society today. Creativity is also about liberating human energy. And ACT ITFM is about activating feminism, creativity in a way which is fun and in a way which we as young people can express ourselves I have to run to catch up with the taxi and be civil to the batch who takes my money and calls me baby for no other reason than the fact that I have to go to school and I am old. Hang on, Mama.
mind was, um, I think it was, I was a bit scared because people like to hold on to that first impression or that first image they have of you. So they like to see the girl in the blue dress with the kitten heels and the face and the curly or whatever. And, and actually finding the courage to just be like, I don't care, this is what's going on inside, this is what... This is the frustration I feel. Let me share this with you. And if you are open to it, then you're open to it. If you're not, you're not. We want to mobilize young women to play a more active role in local government and inspire the belief that we can effect social change. Unless policies pertaining directly to women are enacted by women, we will continue to live in a world in which we are disproportionately burdened by social ills. Act ITFM aims to address this. To begin with, ACT ITFM has chosen three key areas that are of particular importance to women. These are employment, transport and violence. Do I like my job? I wake up every morning making sure that you have a better future. I may not be a doctor or a president or a teacher, but I can make sure that I do a better job to secure the future. So yes, I do like my job and every woman can be like me too and be their own bosses breaking the cycle of unemployment patriarchy like culture that we live in that men own us and that men are more powerful than us and they'll do anything to show us that Now, Gayla UWC is uh, an, an, an LGBTI organization, but that is more focused on transgender activism and transsexual activism. What we do annually is that we, um, I think this is the start of point, is that we have an annual Gayla pageant, whereby um, it's cross-dressing um, persons taking to the stage and owning it. Now, this may vary from time to time. The first year, we only had um, transgender um, males entering the, 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 the pageant and as of last year it was a mixture between females and males. So that is one of the things that we do. We invite um, stakeholders on campus to the platform and then um, we sell tickets for the general student populace to come there and then what we seek to do is to challenge um, gender stereotypes in the face of people on campus because a lot of attention is being put within how you must look and there's not a lot of fluidity in terms of I as a person, I've got my own identity, I should be able to decide for myself what I want to wear and how I want to present myself to a public. So that is one of the platforms that we use to educate um, students and stakeholders on campus. Other platforms would be that we have workshops, educational workshops, that we invite people to come over and then engage with them, such as house comms um, and other affiliated structures on campus. Um, well, interestingly enough, we haven't partnered with any religious organization on campus at this particular point in time because it is quite a contentious issue, um, both from a, because you can get a facilitator in, but you don't always know how it's going to go down once students are alone on campus and they interact with each other. So it's a very sensitive matter and something that we will most likely explore because a lot of people we believe do have a strong religious background and that they want to uphold that. How do you hold on to your faith when other people tell you that the space is not for you because of the choice that you make? We've got this book, we've got this relationship with this God and it's very personal and it's subjective to every individual. Everybody has a way of justifying why they believe what they believe. I mean, we, we, there's so many different things 
denominations, denominations, churches, different policies they work through, but they say they worship the same God, they use the same Bible. So your personal relationship with God, how you interpret it, how it makes sense with you, I guess. Now, I just want to say, I don't think there's any such word as homosexuality in the Bible. And I mean, I'm, I'm not a, a, a student of religion, but I don't think whether it's in the Quran, the Talmud, the Bible, or the whatever the case may be. And um, Christianity, or um, faiths, or beliefs, or whatever, they are actually the main cause of, of, of the homophobia. Um, and it's also a way of interpreting this thing. A sexist and patriarchal as the Bible in every other form is because there were many women who have written um, what they now call the Gospels or the Scriptures or whatever and it's not really reflected in these so-called books that people hang on and say, oh, the Bible says. And the thing that I'm always fascinated with is that when we fill out like papers on campus and ask for our gender, we're supposed to say sex. She can't tell somebody's gender and yet it's an higher education institute. If you're going to be asking for sex, then that's very specific as to the sex designated to you at birth. And then even with that, it's just not it's not just male or female. There's also intersex and any other um, sex that could have been assigned at birth that should be on that application form. Liberty, you spoke about playing, playing with ideas. Do you think to play has a political role? I think, I think you do, and can you just talk a bit about that? I think playing does have, have a political role. Um, as the poster at the back says, the personal is political. Um, so what I would like to do is take off this top here and take off my bra and then show everyone that this is my body and though this is clothes, this is just typical clothing that I put onto my body, um, but it doesn't necessarily define myself from inside. It may be an expression of who I am, but it's not a set identity. Just because I am presenting as typical female at this point in time doesn't mean I identify as female solely. Um, Therefore, when I take to the stage, I might take to a stage or on campus as either Glenton or Liberty. And sometimes my friends call me Liberton or Glentiberty because it's a mixture of the two. So I do believe that it is important to play as to how you present yourself. But all those expressions together brings about an identity and not an isolation, um, set an identity for the person. It was a complete personal choice. Like, the first tattoo that I got is on my outside with my mother's name in Chinese and I, I got it to commemorate her life because she lived a beautiful life and she was taken from me too soon. So yeah. If I had made the decision to have it on my lower back, you know, so be it. But I didn't because I wanted to to be by my side. <laughs> It's a story. It's a story on my body. Mm -hmm. What do you feel? How do you feel about it? Swelling in the belly. I think it's a root. Do you know why I think it's a root? Because at the end of the day, like look at this thing that we are doing here. This is our future, man. Mm. So that's why I think it's important it's, about... But that's why I agree. It's my future and I'm not happy giving something as powerful as my vote to the people who are up there who don't represent me. But, no, but the interesting thing is if you, do, if you don't vote, then that means that you're giving them again the chance yes. to continue. So I feel like I should vote, but I yeah. should spoil my ballot and maybe like write a message like disillusioned with the system or something on my ballot. What do you think <laughs> I of that? It. It doesn't matter. It's, I know that I've taken a stand and I haven't given mm -hmm. yeah. my. But I think that's a good idea about like why must we vote and if we vote, can we have alternative way of voting? So I feel like that like, there's no space given to people who feel like this, who feel like mm -hmm. I want to vote. I understand how my my ancestors have struggled in this country to allow me to vote, but I don't want to vote for anyone. Mm -hmm. I feel like whenever I say that, people react with shock. Mm. Like you're wasting, we fought so hard, you're being so lazy, this new generation. I feel like there's never a space for us who want to say, look, I, I understand the importance of taking part. 
I don't feel like anyone up there represents me. Why? Yeah. Why do you mm -hmm. This one is the people make voting as your <laughs> not right. Your so duty. Your citizen. 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 Right? So citizen duty. duty. Yeah. What is, why is it duty? Because it really is the only way that we feel we participate in a democracy. Yeah. You know how Monique was just saying that there needs to be a forum. There really isn't a forum. The big debate is an attempt at getting a conversation going, but it's extremely limited. Okay. You know? So there's no other way in which ordinary citizens feel like they can participate in this democracy. It's just it's just the vote that we have. Well, we have protests. Protests is the way to participate in the democracy. Yes, that's yeah. what I'm voting. We have that yeah. too. Yes. To get some sort of reaction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What for you would be participating in democracy? For example, you belong to this organization. What do you understand is participating in democracy? But in this organization, you meet in the nations as young women. That is why we think you know, it, it will become, can they be looking at a way of Oh, participating. Yeah, or participating. Can there be an alternative way of doing it? And As part of this intergenerational dialogue, I'm going to, um, I've been asked to do a poll. And to many of you it might seem a bit idealistic, but I think that is what youth brings to us. Um, setting idealistic goals and striving to achieve them. So to the young women, um, not just the ones that are part of Young Women Govern South Africa, but all of you here, I want to just quote from Angela Davis when she spoke to a group of college students. She says, remember that you must not only imagine and dream about your future goals and indeed the future world, but you must stand up, unite, and fight for peace, jobs, equality, and freedom. So that poem. I am the rhythm of swaying trees, of swelling seas, of swarming bees. I sooty black like ink, or rather the eye in ink that creeps divinely across the creamy barren landscape of a poet's page. Before I start and after I'm done, I will remind you that in my battle I am one woman. Thinking about my lips, my eyes, my hips, my thighs that, that are confined by your jealousy, my desire for freedom being restricted by your inability to see me as a woman that I choose to be. <laughs> What's wrong with being who you are? Who you want to be? Hey you. Yes you. Look at me. I am a sexy feminist. <laughs> if there is any regard for the breath that I am, that I am breathing, if there is any attempt for me to savor this life, to make it one that I would want to be living, don't tell me who to love. Writer, painter, lover of art, look beyond my everyday display of expectation. Inside, I'm showing you my truth. I will cherish your appreciation. See me as I see myself, and love me as I love myself. I am what gives voice to my words. I am the ability to sort my path. I am what connects you and I beyond this lifetime. I am of worth immeasurable by all calculations. I am the life confirmed by all you see. Wonders. Thank you guys. Wonders. And I'm uh, very proud of you. And I can see excellent work and I know our future is in great hands. And thanks again to everyone for coming and supporting them. Thank you. I just want to scroll now. I want to be a writer. And this is just a letter of your mind. As to all the people that I like to thank you. Um, my body, I can do whatever I want with it. My mind, no one can manipulate it. My life, no one can control it. I will make myself stronger, stronger than yesterday. I will make my voice louder so that everyone can hear. I will make my own future and no one will change it. I may be tiny and I may be quiet, but someday I will be someone you will inspire.